So welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. We do videos like this weekly. So I have viewers ask me all the time to please show your servicing videos on all of your equipment, whether that be a log splitter, the tractor, whatever that may be. And it just so happens now is the time for me to do mostly a full service on this tractor. I have a lot to cover today. I just had my hydraulic system completely serviced with new filters. I don't have to do that for several hundred more hours, but we're gonna touch just about everything else today. And I've been doing a lot of mowing with the tractor recently. Everything's dirty, so I'm gonna show you how I maintain it. We're gonna go ahead and check change filters, oil, all kinds of stuff. I'll show you the cab filters and my whole routine on how I do a full clean out on my tractor. So for starters, I'm gonna go ahead and blow out all underneath the hood, get that cleaned out and very important to clean out our front radiators. This is often overlooked by a lot of people and you want it with a tractor that overheats. And if you have a cab version, you want it with an air condition that doesn't cool properly. So as you can see, I have a 20 inch wand here with a rubber tip. And I find this works excellent for getting down in between all these different stacked radiators and blowing everything back out the front. Keep in mind, that's the way that it came in due to the way the fan pulls on the motor. So I wanna blow it back out that direction to not wedge anything into my radiators. So I usually start back here where the fan itself is and blow forward. I then like to gently put this rubber tip down in between all the dis these uh, different radiator sets and again working and blowing forward one to the next to the next. And be careful because these aluminum fins do bend so that's why you want low pressure. I'll turn this down and that rubber tip. Due to the amount of hours that I have on this tractor, it's time to go ahead and replace my filters, my main air filters. And you're gonna notice you have two with a setup like this. And it's very difficult to get these off in this cab. I find it's best just to go ahead and pull both the primary and the secondary. And typically this little smaller secondary is always clean, but I have so many hours on the tractor, I'm replacing this one anyways. The primary is what's usually filthy and you can blow these out from the inside to the outside every so often. Again, just like the radiator, you don't wanna blow the direction that you're pulling air, you wanna blow the material back out with light air pressure. So here's my brand new filters. I find it's best just to go ahead and put your secondary inside the primary itself. Then we can slip them both in and you can pull a little secondary back out if you want. While you're in here, this is also a good time to go ahead and check your coolant levels. By removing this cap, it's right here in front of your air filter. Mine looks good. As far as the John Deere's go for the three and four series, in order to remove these side panels, you'll pull a little tab here, spring-loaded tab, twist it, and all right, then you'll just slide everything forward. There's catches up front, bottom, and two little pins that stick in rubber grommets on the rear. I like to go ahead and blow any dust and dirt away from where I'm gonna screw on my new filter and where the fill cap is so nothing can potentially fall in the engine. A lot of times you'll wind up with stuff caked up all around that. So I like to start at the front of the tractor and kind of work my way all the way to the back on my service, just the way that I do it. So coming up next, if you need to check your front axle uh, fluid, hydraulic fluid level. If you take that dipstick out right there, it's got a notch mark on it. Mine's just recently in service, so I'm good to go there. Next in line is going to be our fuel filter. So it has a cartridge filter on the inside, a little ring down here that you can see that'll let you know if you have water in your fuel. Here is a cutoff valve, we're gonna cut that off. And there is a little drain down there on the very bottom of the filter. 
and there is another fuel filter as well this cartridge type right here you want to change both of these together go ahead and invest in one of these cheap rubber wrenches for removing filters like this in odd locations these work the best so I'll just tighten that rubber belt up around that filter and now I can loosen it up trying to get these off and on by hand it's just about impossible all right so there's that plastic ring don't lose that and you'll notice there is an o-ring around the outside edge all the new filters come with that so we're going to pop this old one off we're going to dispose of it and put a brand new one on and the cartridge itself is actually hung up in here so i need to get that pulled out so here is my new cartridge that i will press up into here my new o-ring that needs to go on and by the way i have a little bit of diesel on my gloves so i'll lubricate that o-ring real quick so it doesn't want to pull off whenever i go to tighten all this pop that on screw this back in and hand tighten it and then i usually go about a quarter turn past hand tightening with my little tool and this filter is good to go don't forget to turn your fuel back on that's going to be just about impossible for me to show this on camera. I'll put a little catch pan underneath this filter. Use the same rubber wrench because this one is very difficult to get off. All right, there's our new filter. Okay, now our fuel system has been serviced. So depending on what model tractor you have and how the oil pan goes over the uh, center drive shaft, you could potentially have two oil drain plugs. I've seen that. I think my last three series had that from what I can remember. But mine is right here. It's an 11 sixteenths. This is the lowest part of the drain pan. I put my used oil in five gallon buckets. So right up in here is the oil fill plug. I usually open that up while I'm draining. As you can see, it's kind of in an odd location, but I have a workaround for that to make it a little more convenient for filling. So a lot of people actually will remove the loaders when they do an oil change. It says have a quick detach loader, but you still have to disconnect all of your hydraulic fittings. I don't go through that much trouble. I have found that I can run a filter or a filler tube right down through here and i have cut me a piece of water hose to go on the end of a long funnel set it right here and i can fill that hole easily no point in removing all this stuff and right here is my oil filter i'll get that in just a second sadly due to the location of that it does make a mess and drips all over your hoses whenever you're done so this makes so much of a mess because there's so many hoses under it. I think I'm going to find, maybe cut myself a end of a water bottle off, attach a hose to the bell end where the cap goes, and make something that I can stick up underneath there and run a hose to the bucket because it is always a mess. Now, as far as filling this tractor goes, I bought a long reach funnel and I put a piece of cut off old water hose on the end. Now I can feed it right down into that fill tube and the tube itself props up right in here just fine and I can fill it up. You need to go with what your manual recommends for the type of oil for your situation, but I run 15W40, the thicker oil, because we're down here in Florida. I do a lot of mowing, um, so I'm putting a tremendous amount of heat in this tractor. So I like a heavier weight oil. Also, one thing that you'll notice <laughs> I would never encourage people to not put what the manual says in for capacity 
for the amount of oil in your engine. But every single time I have ever tried to fill this engine to what my manual says, it is majorly overfilled. So I've actually had to cut back quite a bit. I watch my dipstick as I fill. And if you go look on a lot of the tractor forms, I'm not the only one experiencing that. So a lot of people brought this up the last time I did an oil change. If you'll actually pour the oil this direction and leave your tube up top, it'll suck and siphon air in, give you a smooth, quick pour. If you pour this direction, it tries to suck air in while the actual hole is filled full of oil. And that's when you get that sloshing back and forth effect. But due to the way my funnel is, I have to kind of start out with the side. And now I'm getting a smooth pour. Always leave the top of the hole open to suck air. Also keep in mind there are three different four series tractors. I think there's two different engines and then it's all in the way they're turboed. I am not sure of the capacity of other engines in the four series lineup. So again, refer to your manual for your actual capacity. That's why I'm not really giving numbers here. I don't want somebody to put the proper amount of oil in their tractor. All right, so another often overlooked filter. I'm not gonna change mine out because I just serviced this, but it's all up here on the back side of the glass. If you'll look up in there, in those vents is a foam filter. There is a Phillips head screw right here, there, there, and there. There's four that are real easy to get to. Those two plastic pieces pop down. You pull out a foam filter, blow it out. That is the air recirculation for the cab. And while this tractor doesn't have a true air recirculation button that would close a damper, and boy, I wish that it did, it'd get colder AC. Uh, it always mildly recirculates some, and that does eventually get dusty and needs to be blown out. So aside from the front uh, radiator or condenser that needs to be blown out to help the tractor, another often overlooked area, especially for the air conditioning is your main filter right here. This one gets dirty extremely quickly, very quickly. If you're out in the field mowing and kicking up tons of dust or you're disking up the dirt, you need to blow this out at the end of every day. A lot of people wait way too long and what happens is dirt passes your filter. I guarantee you mine's gonna be dirty because I just got done doing a bunch of mowing and it goes in the AC condenser that's up here and it's kind of cool and damp and the stuff plugs up bad. This is a filter that doesn't need to be overlooked. So two wing nuts right here on the bottom. This slides right down. I happen to have a camera mounted to mine. I just blew my condenser out, which is right in here. It actually looks okay. My filter looks like I was expecting. Looks really bad. That's just from one time mowing. I just blew this out. So I'm gonna remove all this and blow this out as well. I'm gonna lightly blow this area out too, but you see up in there, the condenser, it's already just kind of corroded and old looking because it's, uh, it's so damp in there. But what I typically do is turn my air pressure way down. I'll lightly blow in between all those fins while I have a vacuum cleaner right there because I don't want to blow that junk further in there and let it fall down. I'll actually lightly vacuum out while I blow with just a few PSI of air pressure. So while this filter does blow out well, I suggest replacing this filter a little more often. As you can see, it just drops right in this piece. It can only go one direction. And we'll slide this back up in there. Here is your rear hydraulic fill. And here's a dipstick to check. I just had all that completely serviced. And if you look way up in there, there's two huge hydraulic filters, but you don't do that very often. You do them around 500 hours. Um, I did mine a little later around 600, but I have hundreds more hours to go before I change those big filters up in there and the fluid again. This is also a good time to do a quick once over on the tractor, check all your hydraulic connections, uh, all your wiring, everything, especially if you've been doing heavy mowing like I just did, because sometimes things can pop loose. And I was just giving my tractor a once over and look. There is a wire just dangling out here in thin air. No codes on my tractor, nothing. 
a single wire. Typically a single wire is to a sensor. I don't know if it's temperature or what, but I need to get up underneath there and find out where that was pulled loose from. I also see another wire hanging down a little too low right there. I want to get it out of the way because it's going to get caught and ripped out too. So the fact of the matter is stuff like this is just going to happen if you use your tractor. Now this can't go, but so far, there it is. So what does that go to? And I'm curious why I did not must not be super important to not throw a code in the cab. Huh, that is on my hydraulic filter mount and main hydraulic line. And it is a little sensor. I guarantee you that's probably a hydraulic temperature sensor. If your hydraulic fluid gets too hot, there is a little warning up in the dash to let you know, but I've never gotten my hydraulic fluid that hot. So, easy fix right there. Nothing looks ripped or broken eyeball everything else while I'm underneath here everything looks looks good this is also a good time to mention depending on what type of tractor you have if you completely dump your fuel system like I just did you may have to cycle your key on for a second hear the fuel pump run you'll watch it prime up your bowl down there and fill it full of fluid you may have to do that two or three times before your tractor will crank and run reliably when I've completely drained my fuel system before and got a plug out of a line the tractor wanted to shut off and it just took a few times of priming the system by turning the key off and on, up and running. And last but not least, this is also a really good time to grease any grease fittings that you have. I love this Dewalt grease gun. It makes this process so, so easy. It actually makes it enjoyable. I'll a little tip for y'all. I run nothing but the John Deere grease in this, and I found that if you'll buy it by the case, a 12 pack online on Amazon, you can literally get it for around a third to a fourth the cost of an individual tube. You can get 12. When you add up the total cost, they're around a third to a fourth the price of what you could buy in the store or buy an individual tube. Just huge savings, absolutely huge savings. I'll try to remember to put a link down in the description for that as well. I now run John Deere grease and all my tractor equipment since I buy it by the case. It does take a while to go through that much. By the way, some steering components on certain tractors and other areas will also have grease fittings. That's worth checking out. Okay, hopefully y'all enjoyed that. While there's other things that you wanna check on your tractor as well, that's a pretty significant service right there and is not required very often at all. Greasing is something you're gonna do a little more often. Keeping your air filters clean is something you really need to do often, especially after heavy mowing. Your main hydraulics front and rear, like I said, I think it's 500 or some five to 600 hours in the manual. Just had all that done. Fuel filters, uh, oil, a lot of that stuff is around every couple hundred hours. It's gonna vary based on your tractor. And then giving it a good once over, checking fluid levels, things such as that. As I have a true believer of, if you take care of your equipment, it will take care of you. You'll have a lot less breakdowns, a lot less problems. And the last thing I'm gonna to check today is front and rear tire pressures. Keep an eye on that every so often as well. So thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little episode. This should cover the majority of service for three and four series John Deere's. Again, your capacity and fluid levels and things are gonna change based on where you're at, what size engine that you have. So check your manual for that. But this should show you a lot of the locations of the stuff that's uh, pretty common to service there. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.